you're, you're, yeah. All right, so my name is Phil Eichmiller. Phil is a senior QA engineer on the Fusion team. He's an expert at teaching Fusion, has taught numerous classes at Autodesk University, and continues to teach Inventor and Fusion to students at his local community college. All right, let's see what this, this, uh, the question is, is how to best flatten this? I'm unsure of the best way to flatten this. I would like to get it laser cut, but when I designed it, I thought it would be 3D printed only. The issue is, of course, how do I flatten this so the holes still line up and so the company I'm sending it to knows where to make the bend. I'm not well versed in how metal stretches, so my concern was that if I just measured the edge, it would give me a false measurement. So that's true, that's a good assessment. This is actually a good place to start. Sheet metal has rules, right? And the thing that makes sheet metal repeatable is that you have to use rules. So all transparency here, I saw the part and I made a little sample that's kind of like it. And I'll show you a couple ways where we would just go through, uh, you know, turning this thing into something that is basically sheet metal, which is what you're after, okay? So um, going to the convert to sheet metal part here. Now I've got component uh, colors turned on. So just in case you wanna know, I'm hitting shift and N here. That's why everything's these uh, bright sort of pastel colors. It's just to make it easier to look at. Um, so here's a part that's kind of like the one uh, the customer's talking about. Let's say you wanted to turn this into sheet metal. There's a couple of things uh, about it, right? So if you look at it, it's just a regular body. There's no sheet metal icon. If you look at it from the top, um, and you can see this in the customer screenshot. They use the same radius on the inside and the outside of the bend, which is not how sheet metal works. There should be a uniform thickness here where um, this radius on the inside would be this radius minus the thickness, and then it would be it would be a smaller radius on the inside, right? So there's a, there's a couple of workflows. Let's take a look. Going to the sheet metal tab, you can find this thing called convert to sheet metal. What this is really for is importing something like a step file from another CAD application where the part is a sheet metal part in that application and conforms to all the rules. I showed you where those corners were and that's really important to flatten something. So let's just see what happens if we try to convert to sheet metal because it's probably, I don't know, I could be wrong. Maybe it'll fail, maybe it won't. So thickness detected, two and a half millimeters. That's true, I set it up that way. So the sheet metal conversion tool will kind of figure out what you're doing or what, uh, I should say, what the part is like as it's coming in. So let's take a, and it says show some matching rules. So steel millimeters, I have an existing default rule that matches this. Let's just see what happens when we convert it. So it did convert it, but let's see if the most important thing happens, which is our, our flat pattern. It's a great flat pattern, oh, it's right there. Boop, pick that. That's our stationary face. So create flat pattern to say, okay, if you wanna flatten a piece of sheet metal, just tell me which part, which face to hold still. And does it do it, does it do it? No, it doesn't do it. Now, when a sheet metal flat pattern won't flatten out, it's because the body does not conform to the rules. Okay, so let's figure out how to, how to fix that. Let's go back out of this. We'll finish flat pattern. We can actually just leave that right there and we'll click here. And if we click here, you can see the radius is three millimeters. And if you click here, the radius is three millimeters. So really, uh, since this is two and a half millimeters thick, the inside should be half a millimeter or this should be five and a half millimeters. So um, here's, a, here's one way to do it. Just Let's just get down and dirty here. I'm going to delete these corners by selecting the face and hitting delete. And then I'm going to fill it this and I'm going to make this 5.5 millimeters. Was that right? Yeah, that should be concentric. So five and a half millimeters, hold down control, pick the other edge. So you have to hold down control once you have a fillet preview. So there we go. There's that. Now let's try the flat pattern again and see if we get a better, a better response out of it. And there's our flat pattern, right? So if the body you're trying to turn into a sheet metal part can conform to some sheet metal rule, Fusion will turn it into a sheet metal part and will flatten it out. But wait, there's more. There's a couple other ways to do this. Now this is a little more constructive method. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a, a sketch on top of this part and just finish the sketch. Then I'm gonna to go to the sheet metal flange tool, turn off chain selection, and just pick these top edges. I'm, I'm going around the outside of the face. I'm assuming by the way the part is shaped that uh, the outside of the part is the sort of, uh, is an important datum. So you'll see as I pull this down, I can just click right here and Fusion will read that 
and just make it the right length. So I barely have to type anything in here. Flip it over to side two because it is going towards the outside. And what you'll see here is you'll see the mismatch of the two bodies. There was the that that uh, errant fillet radius or whatever. This is the real sheet metal shape. So um, we could do that and click OK. Um, oh, you know what? I think I want to go ahead and put a sketch right there. Finish the sketch. Turn on the sheet metal body and then just extrude that hole through the sheet metal body like so. So I'm using the existing body that's right here. So there's the existing one and there's the sheet metal one, right? So, so I won't repeat the process, but you could just make a sketch on this face, which picks up the edges of this, just like I picked up the edges of the top there and transfer it over and just extrude it into, as a cut into the, the sheet metal part. Now the, the flat pattern um, is completely free at that point. It's just ready to go. Best part about the second method is that even though you recreate the part, you're using the existing part. So you don't really have to measure or type in very much at all. And you're using sheet metal rules properly so that if your vendor comes back and says, hey, that's let's say two and a half millimeters and we prefer to use two millimeters, then you could just change the rule and everything will update and the part will still stay the same shape except for the thickness, right? That's harder to do when you've converted it to sheet metal. So playing with the sheet metal rules is the most valuable thing there. And if you really want to go you know, further with this, this design, I would re-engineer it as a sheet metal part the way I just did. And that's pretty much this one.